Hello everyone, we are starting with a new series of NEET 2022 discussions in which we will be discussing the most probable asked questions in NEET 2022 MDS exams. So starting about the first question uh, in our series that the question was asked about to identify this probe which has been given over here in the diagram. The options were WHO probe, UNC 15 probe, Williams probe and CPITN probe. Okay. So we will talk about various probes here. Now, first of all, uh, we should uh, remember that there are specific probing forces that are to be remembered. They also may be asked as a question. The uh, probable probing force should be either 25 gram or 0.75 newtons. Okay. Now there are various situations of probe that we'll be seeing over here. The normal probes that we use in our day-to-day -day life or which we generally study, they are first generation probes, which are easily available and they are inexpensive, okay? The best thing over here is that tractile sensitivity is preserved because we directly use them. And even in the presence of subgenial calculus, this can be inserted with a little navigation or uh, changes by the operator, okay? Here, the tip is rounded to avoid tissue trauma. And most of these cases in uh, the first generation probe, they are color coded or there are specific codings which are given okay so we'll see various uh, first generation probes so this is the first probe which is shown over here in the diagram this is a normal williams probe which has got calibrations on 1 2 3 5 7 8 9 and 10 so we can see that 4 and 6 over here are missing now one more question is uh, why the five, 4 and 6 uh, calibrations are missing over here. It is just for the easier mani uh, manipulation during the uh, community programs. We can see either it is uh, less than 4 uh, 5 mm or it is more than 5 mm. Okay, so that is just for the ease of operator. Now, the second probe which you see over here, this is the WHO probe. Now, here we can see there is a uh, when it is a CPITN probe, WHO CPITN probe, you can see a 0.5 mm ball over here in the starting. Okay. And then there are calibrations which are from 3.5 to 5.5, which is color coded. Then the next calibration is on 8.5 and the third calibration or the final calibration is on 11.5. So these are the markings of WHO CPITN probe. And then we can see this is a UNC 15 probe. The UNC over here stands for University of North Carolina. Here the calibrations are from 0, uh, 1, 0 to 15 and the markings are from 1 to 15 and specifically there are stops or the markings which are color coded at 5, 10 and 15 which you can see in UNC 15 Pro. Now this flattened head is the Goldman Fox probe. It is same as Williams probe, but it is having a flat head. Now, why this is flattened? Because it provides an ease to go into the labial as well as lingual surfaces. Now, this is probably you all know the neighbor's probe, which is specially um, used. It is specially used to diagnose the furcation involvement and the access to the furcation to know the extent of the furcation. So these are all the first generation probes. Now, what are the disadvantages of them? They are heavier and the probing, probing force cannot be calibrated because it depends on the operator. Okay. And the errors may be there in reading as well as the forces which are applied. So this was about the first generation probes. Now, when we see the second generation probe, which is shown over here, it is, they are the true pressure sensitive probes. Now they are called true uh, pressure sensitive because there is a specific standardization of the probing with forces which has been done for this uh, forces. Uh, this probes, they are 20 grams which are calibrated in the system. Now the disadvantage of this that the probe tip may pass beyond the junction epithelium in case of inflamed sites and also there is no computer storage of data in this second generation probes. Now talking about the third generation probe, they are the automated probing systems. Here, the software integrates with the existing computer system to provide the computerized periodontal charting. 
Now this shown over here is the Florida probe, which is a third generation probe, which was, uh, give, which was devised by Gibbs in 1987. Now the advantage of this is the entire uh, um, data can be printed out easily and it can be shown to the patient for education purpose and the chances of errors are minimal in this kind of probe. That is the third generation probe. This Florida probe has a constant pressure of 15 grams. And a precision of 0.2 millimeters is maintained in case of Florida probe. Now, the disadvantage of this third generation probes are that the tactile sensitivity is decreased and probe may pass beyond the uh, junctional epithelium in which uh, sites which are inflamed. Okay. Now, talking about the fourth generation probes, they are the three dimensional probe. They are currently under development and no much of the research, uh, much of the uh, data is available. It is still under research. But remember, if they are asking the fourth generation probe, it utilizes the three dimensional. It is a three dimensional probe and it is uh, made or it is currently under development with the vision of obtaining a precise and continuous reading of the base of the sulcus or pocket. Now, talking about the fifth generation probe, they are called the ultrasound or the US probes because they, they are designed to utilize ultrasound in addition to the 3D technology. They aim to accurately measure the attachment level without even penetrating the junction epithelium. So for a more comfortable examination and a precise mapping, this fifth generation probes are used. This is the fifth generation probe that is the US or the ultrasound probe. The setup which is required for this uh, entire user of the device is this setup. So it requires the entire setup. It is very expensive and hence it is technique sensitive also. So these are the various generations of probes that we are seeing. So summarizing the part again, these are various probes which we are seeing. So this is the WHO probe over here, which is having a 0.5 mm ball at the tip and the markings are at 3.5, 8.5, 11.5. And there is a color code between 3.5 to 5.5. Now, this is a Michigan O probe, which is having the markings at 3, 6 and 8 mm. This is the UNC 15 probe, that is University of North Carolina. It is a 15 mm long probe with uh, markings at each millimeter and color coding at 5th, 10th and 15th millimeter. Now, this is a Marquis color coded probe which is having the calibrations in 3 mm sections. The first 3 mm are not marked and the next 3 mm are marked. So is for the next sequence. Okay. And then this is a Michigan O probe that is with a Williams marking same as Williams that is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 are missing 5, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay. Also there are specific probes for implant. If you want to see the peri-implant surface or probing near the implant, do not do it with the normal probes. We can always do it with plastic probes or they are also called as color probes. So this is all about the probing part you need to remember. Thank you everyone.